Justice Warriors, good afternoon. It's Tuesday, March 21st. It's almost 3 p.m. I am doing my cliff notes right now from yesterday's live. Uh, sorry about that. I had a doctor's appointment this morning, so it kind of threw me a curveball. But anyway, there were just a couple of important points that I wanted to put into this cliff notes version. Um, everything I say is simply my opinion. It's always just my opinion, okay? Um, take it for what it is. If you like what I'm saying, great. If you don't like what I'm saying, that's okay. That's fine. Um, you know, I am really having a lot of trolls coming at me, and it's a double-edged sword. You know, part of me is very annoyed by it, of course, and another part of me is like, oh, Okay, so you're inadvertently telling me that I'm onto something, otherwise you wouldn't be wasting your time. I mean, it's not just my channel, it's a lot of channels, right? So it's curious, it's very curious. Um, so much gaslighting in this Idaho 4 case. So what I was saying about my disclaimer that everything I say is simply my opinion, it's for the sake of conversation, hoping to learn something and just have a discussion. And all my videos are made specifically for YouTube, which is an entertainment platform. So I find it imperative to include that in my disclaimer. Please share, subscribe, and like if you feel so inclined. Um, it's really about inspiration. You know, if if you feel inspired by some of what I share, then great. And if you don't, that's fine too. I mean, there's so many channels and everybody has their own style. Um, I like to interact with my people and I like to just try to keep it real, you know, just put one foot in front of the other and just be myself and just tell you guys what I'm thinking, what I'm uh, learning, what I think I might know, what I feel like I don't know. Um, so yesterday's video, basically outlining some of the major gaslighting going on in the Idaho 4 case that I think is very parallel to some of the major gaslighting that was going on in the Kylie Rodney case and still is. So the three things that I wanted to discuss is the two men that followed Kaylee around, I think about a month or two before the brutal massacre in her uh, residence that she had just moved out of, her and her three friends. So two men following her, her around, and then the police said that they investigated that and that it all checks out and it's all fine and dandy. Not, not ever fine and dandy. Um, did they really track these guys down and how? Curious, very curious. Um, so another gaslighting, I think that was a gaslighting. I think those two dudes may very well have something to do with something, just my opinion. Um, when the police had been saying up front that the people in the house were targeted and they weren't sure exactly who they thought maybe Maddie or Kaylee or maybe Ethan Zana they weren't sure right and then after a few days they said wait no we're not at all sure that anybody was targeted we actually think that maybe the house was targeted and then they retract that said no 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 the house wasn't targeted so why did they say that the house could have been targeted that's weird so the house being targeted kind of gives itself away, in my opinion, as potential um, dealing, trafficking. So just an opinion. The other gaslighting item I have here is the crashed car, the white Hyundai Elantra that was crashed in Oregon and abandoned with the plates removed. So we were told at first that that car had something to do with the case, and then we were told that the car had nothing to do with the case, and then it seems like maybe that car is registered to the owners or the former owners of 1122 King Road. Maybe they live in Colorado, where... Loomis, Colorado, like where Koberger happened to drive when he went 800 miles out of his way, going home across the country with his daddy on December 13th. 
um, when the FBI lost track of them. That was weird. Okay. So I spoke about the um, body cams from, and I'll put that in the links below, um, the body cams of, uh, it was August 16th, 2022. It was about 5.30 in the evening, and the police walk up to Jack D's residence. There's people partying outside, and they talk to them. And then they walk from Jack D's residence over to Kaylee's residence. And it's kind of funny. At first, I counted five uh, white Hyundai Elantras. Actually, three of them were white, I think, and two of them were silver, just in that short little tiny walk. And one of the white Hyundai Elantras was pretty much right in front of um, 1122 King Road. But I'm not 100% sure that they're Hyundai Elantras. I want to be specific about that. They just look like they could be. And it was just kind of funny, right? And Right away, there's like some weird guy in a Ranger t-shirt wearing a backpack that's buckled and he's got a ball cap on and black socks and looks like he might even be wearing van sneakers, you guys. <laughs> and he's odd. He looks maybe a little bit older than your average college student, like maybe 25, 30. I don't know. Anyway, the police walk up to the house and he's like, oh yeah, I was looking for something. I lost something last night. They hand him a business card and they proceed to walk around and trespass on the side of the house and go up to the back door. So they yelled out, no one's coming to the door. And they didn't knock on the front door, you guys. They actually did not knock on the front door. Um, and so they lied. They literally lied. And this is the body cam footage where one of the cops says, oh, no access to the back patio. Um, it's odd to me, too, how it's 5.30, I think, is the timestamp on the body cam footage. And this is a noise complaint, and they say it gets more expensive as it gets later. Basically, don't make me come back later. And the cop even says, I would much rather have you spend that $300 on beer or something fun. The cop says that to, directly to Kaylee, and he's standing kind of close to her. And I just find that so bizarre. Why would you want her to spend 300 bucks on beer, dude? Anyway, he's also making himself way too comfortable, just like leaning up against the beam and it... The whole thing is bizarre to me. Um, it's especially bizarre to me to see Kaylee not looking drop-dead gorgeous. Like, she usually, you know, looks like Cindy Crawford or somebody to me. I mean, she's amazing looking. And she just looks so stressed out. She's got this really weird, pensive look on her face. She, her body looks very awkward in what I call the sausage dress. But let me be clear even on her worst day in a sausage dress, totally stressed out. She looks amazing. She looks absolutely amazing. So, you know, I, I just, I, I get really creeped out by these cops walking up to her back door, lying about knocking on the front door because they didn't. Like, listen to the tape. Check it out for yourself. It's weird. Um, so later in the video yesterday, I was comparing the sizes of the University of Idaho with Wazoo. And I've said this before, but um, Wazoo is called the zoo. That's what people that go to school there, they just refer to it as the zoo because it's like National Lampoon Animal House. That's just the way that school is. It's the way they roll. Um, so I was comparing the sizes. Now, the town's... Moscow is like twice the size of Pullman, I believe, that Moscow community, the townies, are about 12,000. And Pullman community is a lot less than 10,000, in my understanding. And then Wazoo is like 25,000, and the University of Idaho is slightly over 10,000, I think. So basically, when you combine all the populations in these two sister cities, you have roughly 22 to 25,000 people in Moscow and roughly 30 to 35,000 people in, Waz in Wazoo, <laughs> in Pullman. So um, the towns are very small. The communities are very small. 
uh, the University of Idaho is kind of a medium college, medium-sized college, and Wazoo is a pretty big college, right? Um, I did disclose a little bit in this video from yesterday that something I'd wanted to share with my people for a while about my grandfather um, who fought in the Korean War and had shell shock. Um, you know, it, there was no such thing as PTSD back then. It was called combat fatigue. And everybody had it. If you went to war, you had shell shock. It was a fact. Some people had it worse than others. Um, and if you want to hear more about the funny little story when I interviewed my grandpa when I was 17 years old and I was just oblivious to what I was triggering, but he did fine and I did fine. It was just kind of funny because I, being a silly, not so smart teenager, I asked like the worst possible questions in the worst possible way. Like, well, didn't you feel bad? Like, that everybody died and that you were in charge and you were the only one that survived. So yeah, not, not too graceful. Um, and one of my commenters mentioned something about uh, Kopaka having ties to Illinois. And I did look up online and see that there is a Brent Kopaka with ties to Illinois, but I don't know that that's the same Brent Kopaka. And I just want people to be very careful, not just on my channel, but in general, not to be stating things as fact when you don't know. A lot of times you find contradictory information online. Like a good example for me recently is um, trying to figure out if Nathan Gonzalez was actually related to Kaylee, if that was her uncle or not. And for a while, everywhere I looked, it said that he wasn't. And then I found some places where it said that he was. And, you know, I don't know for fact one way or the other, but you got to be discerning when you're fact checking and you know, keep an open mind. You just don't know for sure. So I believe that Nathan Gonzalez is Kaylee's uncle. And the reason I believe that is because I found her granddad's obituary from June. Her granddad was only 71 and passed away. So that's really sad for the whole family. Then to have this tragedy in November and it sounded like from what people were saying in my chat and I haven't checked it out and looked at uh, the Gonzalez family Facebook posts, but it sounds like Nathan's not doing well. So uh, my heart goes out to them. My heart breaks for that family. My heart breaks for all of these victims. And, you know, I'm just hoping to keep pressing forward and maybe get some justice. Whether that justice is the criminal defendant that they have um, in jail, if he's guilty, then let's see the receipts. And if there's other parties involved, that needs to be ferreted out. And it just seems like there's a whole lot of effery going on in this case, and it makes me concerned. So um, I want to thank you guys for watching and have a great rest of your afternoon. I hope you can get all the exercise that you need, get all the rest that you need. Eat well, stay hydrated, have a good time hanging out with your friends, family, maybe some solitude. Um, just make sure that every day you are taking care of yourself and choosing what inspires you. Surround yourself with what inspires you. I can't emphasize that enough for your mental health and uh, just health and happiness to be sure that every choice you make is what you want. And on that, I'm going to say peace out, sending you light and love. And thanks again for watching. See you on the next one. All right.